well, take a look very carefully at the prices. 162 to replace what was already on there. Oops, let's change that over. £162 to change what's already in there and keep it the same. £12 odd for a headlight adjuster for most Peugeots. Or a Helite motor, a Hella motor. £6.85. What do you reckon? That's why I went down this route. Freely available on eBay. It seems to work. The other thing that I ordered up was a, for want of a better word, a 10k stereo pot if you like. You know, it's like an over glorified volume control, but if you see it's got two 10k pots, okay, because I've got to keep them both independent. So uh, uh, I've got to make sure because obviously if I don't keep them independent and something happens, then obviously the, uh, I'll have both headlights that are knackered. I'd rather have just one of them. So there's two potentiometers, it's the same as this one here, that one there that you see, but it's just two of them, that's all it is, two tracks, one on either side. So I'll solder all this up and I'll put this in the, uh, in the dash somewhere, and then I've got the rotary control. I'll, I'll still see if I can use the rotary control that's already there, but I don't think I'll be able to. I'm not too bothered either way, as long as it works, it's a nice little interesting product uh, project. And of course it saves me, 100 quid and that was uh, you know just going on the internet and searching absolutely terrifying some of these things and when you think that these things here couple of quid that's all they've cost me um, okay I might have been a bit lucky to get them but uh, they do the job and uh, we'll see if it all works I might be eating me words but it's worth a try right here we go try and show it the best I can I've got my little pot there and that's 10k resistance and also I've got two resistors they're 1.5k each on either side and in the centre I've got the signal wire that goes to the servo and here we go that's one extreme This is the part that's connected to the headlight and actually moves the actual innards to change the actual beam. And the beauty about this is it can be stopped anywhere. As you can see, this is infinitely variable. It's a proportional system, basically. So it doesn't matter where you put the pot, it will follow it and go to it. Now, the adjustment for the headlights to make sure that they start off in the same place each time is here. There's a knurled knob that goes onto that which goes onto the headlight and it's that part that pushes and pulls the actual headlight unit. So you can adjust it for the slight difference between the two units. As you can see I've made them both now and I've made them in the same way that I've shown you just by using um, the brass inserts from a connector block which is this. Taking the inserts out and I've used those to actually connect the two parts together. You've got a ball joint in there as I've shown you before in the slides and that allows it to move. So as you can see when I move it from one extreme to the other this angle changes. So the only way that you can do this is with a ball joint it back the other way so it's the full extreme. The total movement there is about 11 millimeters so it's not a lot but it's plenty um, for the application that it's ne that's necessary for. Anyway we'll see if it all works I'm taking a chance but these damn things are a hundred pound to replace are a joke and apparently they are very common failures on most Campers, BMWs, Citroëns, Peugeots, the whole lot, they all use them. What a joke. Absolute joke. I've used the rings off them um, as a spacer just to take up the just to take up the slack to make sure that the servo's tight. But that's all I've done. 
So once it's wired in, we'll see how things go. You can see the servo lead has to go in here and you can see that I've got red there and black on the other side. The center position is the signal feed and basically what's happening is is that there's a, a potentiometer in here and what's happening is is that when you select a position on this potentiometer the signal if you like or the resistance in the center there and on the center of the servo connector it looks for the same and once the same has been reached then it stops which is why you can set it infinitely to any position that you like well that's the theory of it just go see if it works right that's the unit and I've already got one installed I'm gonna have a play about first you can just about see it I think there it is there and this is what it pulls and pushes so I'm keeping my fingers crossed it's gonna work might do it might not have to wait and see the adjustment I've made sure that they're here can you see those uh, that's that brass tag that I've used as a joiner I've got a little bit of adjustment on that as well because we don't want you don't want the motor to stall if the motor stalls it's going to burn out the potentiometer so you know we're not home and dry yet right here we go the great test I've only done a lash up so here we go Let's see what happens You can judge it by the other one. There's the other one right up quite high. Here we go again. So that's not bad, is it? And I can adjust it, of course, by adjusting the screw here. And that will actually adjust the, the height. So I'll adjust it when it gets dark. Well, I'll get it rigged up first, I think, but it seems to be all right. Both units are in now. Wired to me connector blocks, and the next thing is the wiring and the switch. This is the control, the old control for the rotary knob for the hydraulic, but there's no way that I can do anything with this. There's a big rotary unit that goes, hydraulic unit that goes behind there and I cannot adapt it. So I've had to put a, a rotary control in there and as you see the electronics are just bolted onto the back there, or part of them anyway. Hardest job believe it or not, threading this wire through, it's a, uh, well I've got six core but uh, three core would be sufficient. From the engine where it's going to pick up the servos on the headlights to the switch that's going to be located here. That's taken more time frigging about doing all this than anything else. And it's only six degrees out, so it's not a very good idea for a winter project like I've done. <laughs> right, before I start putting things back, you can see that I've just got this hanging out. There's my little control knob there. So that would be lights up, that would be lights down. That's if I've wired it round the right way. There's my cable coming out from there. I'll loop that back in a moment and it goes through the dash. And if we go round here, I know it's a bit of a mess, but you'll have to forgive me. The cables have been nice and tidied up. I've put them in a sleeve. Come along, along here, and along there. These I've got to sort out because as you can see it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mess. I've tapped the headlight adjusters off of the side lights and the servo is there and now we're going to see if they work so when I turn on the side lights they shouldn't come on until then and then after that the servo should work with the headlights because of course the side lights stay on with the headlights anyway let's have a look All right we'll look at the actual line here we go that's it Well, previously, 
it hardly moved, it didn't move at all, so we were all right, I think. That's going to be quite a lot, because bear in mind, it's only 10 foot away, that door. So, of course, it's not going to appear as it's moving much, but in actual fact, it is. There you go. So that's it done. All I've got to do now is put everything back. Getting a bit dark now, but as you can see, the servo is fitted nicely there. There you go, there it is. There's the cable that comes up to it, put it in a sheath. And the other side's not so easy to get to. It's sort of there. And all the wiring's tidy as well now. The wiring goes back on this white wire here. This is the one that uh, that goes all the way up to the uh, up to the dashboard. Now I've got all this mess to sort out. But I've also taken the opportunity to sort out all these cables because, as you can see, I've tied them back. They're all in the way. Like, for instance, when you push the accelerator pedal down, the top end was actually catching some cables. Not good. Nothing to do with me, but just sorted it out. Anyway, that lot can all go back now, and we're away. Dark enough now to actually try. I've started it up, managed to start it just below uh, 11 volts. So that's not bad with all the messing about I was doing. I didn't think I'd get it going. Anyway, let's see uh, how it works from inside the cab. Possibly a little bit dark now, but there's me white button. So I can easily see it. It's next to the original one and the arrow points to it. So it's in, in near enough level with the zero. Anyway, I'll put the headlights on and we'll see how we go. So here we go. Headlights on. And that's the uh, the dip position, and we'll now raise them up. You can see them coming up, I hope. And if you can, it's not so easy to see, you know. It doesn't seem to come out too well on the camera. But I can assure you they're moving. Take it down. See if I can zoom in a little bit, see if that makes it any better. Right, here we go. Here we go. Isn't it amazing? It doesn't seem to be a lot, but I can assure you it is. But obviously, over the distance, it would be even. Uh, it'd be even more. So let's have a look. Let's do that. I think the camera doesn't show it that well for the simple reason that. Um, it just shows all the all the game, but I can assure you it's all moving. There you go. Anyway, that's it, all done, and gold am I glad. This has been one hell of a project, and it's not ideal to do during the winter. Anyway, that's it. If anybody want anybody else wants to have a try, that's how you do it, and it does work. Bye, bye.